Hi y'all, um, this is Jimmy Staley. I am the blogger from conjuringjusticeblog.com. I'm here to make a video that is a very important video, but I don't want to make it. Um, I don't want to be put in the position to tell you what I'm going to tell you. I, uh, I have a mess and I found myself in a very bad position with this Corona thing. Um, in January, right before my doctor's appointment, I found out that my neurologist, who I see on an annual basis, um, didn't take my insurance any longer. And it's a hell of a process to, to try to find a neurologist that isn't an asshole and that is capable and can, you know, you can get into. Um, it's a very difficult process and it, it's a strenuous thing on a good day. And I wasn't having much luck when this descended upon us. So, um, I'm coming to you now because I have no way of getting my MS meds, which help me function daily and stave off the progression of this disease. Um, because I'm basically uh, been told by dozens of doctors that, you know, just wait till this corona thing passes because everybody's assuming it's going to be in a couple weeks or so. Um, and now here we are, months down the road. Um, so, uh, you know, and then even if everything were to clear up tomorrow, I would be the last in line to see these doctors because they have other patients that they have pre-existing relationships with and who are their current patients and I am you know a potential patient so I, I don't rank I don't rank in importance and this is literally my life and and this freaking shutdown is taking days off my life and it's not that I'm not sympathetic to people that might have fought with corona but I think that there is a, a massive amount of people that are hurting and it will be hurt by this prolonged shutdown. Right now, I have a friend, Richard. He is an elderly man who has what's scheduled to have a bladder biopsy because his, his doctors think he has cancer. Um, they scheduled him an outpatient procedure to put him out to do this and corona hit they canceled it because it's not essential and he has to wait now i don't know if anybody has ever been told by a doctor you might have cancer but from the time they say that until you find out for sure it's the longest span of time in human history, or at least it feels that way. And for him, it's going to be indefinite and nobody cares. My meds, you know, days are being taken off my life as we speak. So, Knowing that I can't be the only one and Richard can't be the only one. I needed to tell this story. Now I kick ass and take names against corrupt politicians every day. It kills me to get up here and to show them and to show you that I'm helpless because I've never been a helpless a day in my life, but I am now. And my life doesn't register on a graph or a chart that you're going to see. Neither does Richard's when this thing is all over, except when we die. And I'm not willing to give up, but I'm not given much choice here, am I? So what are you going to tell my kids? What are you going to tell his kids and his grandkids? that your fear was more than our time. 
That can't be the answer. I won't let it. And I will do anything I can to prevent that. But the stress of this exacerbates my symptoms. And I'm sure it doesn't help his. And the sad thing is, is I took this story to a friend who's a reporter. I did. Hoping she would pick it up. And say that my life mattered. But she didn't. I speak for the people that can't speak for themselves. What happens when I'm that person? It scares the hell out of me. But Governor Andy Bashir in Kentucky doesn't really care about that, does he? I'm not a number on his charts or his graphs. I'm not a way he'll get funding. I just will be a casualty. <sighs> Collateral damage at the end of the day. <sighs> this isn't right. This just isn't right. And nobody is listening when I stand up without telling the story and say the numbers don't add up. I get arguments and I get called all kinds of names. And I've been told I have blood on my hands for advocating this. Well, let me tell you something. You have blood on your hands too. Every single person that doesn't do anything, you have blood on your hands. This has to stop. We have to go back to a country that functions and cares about all of its people, not just the few. United we stand, divided we fall. And right now, <sighs> this doesn't work. I'm a casualty and I will be a casualty. Richard will be a casualty. And the masses are okay with that. <sighs> so do something, do something for us. We have faces, we have names. We're not anecdotal, we're not hypothetical, we're not provisionary, precautionary, or possible potential victims of this. We are victims. And every one of you holds our lives in your, in your hands. And you do. Being silent, is the same as doing nothing, which it is doing nothing. I mean, I spend my life standing up for people that can't stand up for themselves. That's what I do 10 hours a day, seven days a week. I don't get paid for it. I advocate for people I think should have a voice. Speaking for me. <laughs>